Welcome to Because You Asked Healing. I'm Gary Cassie. I'm glad to have you with us as well as our studio audience today to talk about a very, very important topic, healing. You know, does God still heal? That's the question I get on multiple, multiple emails and questions as I travel the country. Does God still heal? And most people, let me say it this way, a lot of people are taught that he does not. In fact, you'll hear things like God allows bad things to happen. God allowed that person to have cancer, you know. So we have to address this issue, does God still heal? And you have to have an answer for the question. And maybe it doesn't work if you're sick. You have to know that God still heals. Now, I believe in this life, in this body, that pretty much everyone at some time will have to believe God for health. We, we need to understand that we need to prepare and stand on what the Word of God says. So I believe everyone at some point in their life will need to stand on the Word of God, not necessarily a life-threatening situation, but I'm just saying you need to know what the Bible says about healing. Matthew chapter 9, verse 35 tells us this, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing, what, how many, Every disease and every sickness. I think that would include anything that is now currently bothering you. You need to understand that Jesus healed them all. Every disease and every type of sickness. Now in Matthew chapter 8, verse number 17, again, we need to understand that healing was a trademark of Jesus' ministry. Everywhere he went, he healed. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 14 through 17, when Jesus came to Peter's house, he saw Peter's mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand and the fever left her and she got up and began to wait on him. When evening came, many who were demon possessed were brought to him and he drove out the spirits with a word and healed. Again, we find the, the phrase, what? All the sick. He healed all the sick. We also find attached to that, he drove out the spirit. So we'll talk about that in a minute. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. So we see that Jesus healed all the sick in his ministry. He, he had authority to heal all the sick. Of course, in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, how he went around doing good, and again, healing what? all who are under the power of the devil because God was with him. So basically those that are held captive under the jurisdiction of the kingdom of darkness can be set free by the power of God. Jesus did that. Understand this, Satan hates your body because God's presence, his authority dwells in your body. In the earth realm, the place you say, where's, where's the Holy Spirit at? Well, it's not, he's not in a temple made of stone. He is dwelling in fleshly bodies. He is in your body, and the Bible calls it the temple of the Holy Spirit. Satan thus hates our bodies. And he would, he would you know, love for us to be sick and incapacitated. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 13 talks about this. Food is for the stomach and the stomach for food. But God will destroy them both, meaning that in the end, they're not, this body is not eternal. This body's not. The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. So as the food is for a stomach and the stomach was created for food, our bodies were created for the Holy Spirit. Understand that. Okay. Just as our stomach is created for the specific purpose of handling digestion for food, food for the stomach and stomach for the food, our bodies were created for the Holy Spirit to walk in this realm, the earth realm, uh, by, with the Holy Spirit. Verse uh, chapter 6, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 says, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you've received from God? You're not your own. You were bought at a price, therefore honor God with your body. Your body is holy. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. It is holy, and this scripture lets us know it is not your own. Okay, so for a proper perspective for us to understand the value of our body, we need to understand that it is purchased. Jesus paid for it. He owns it. Why does he, why does he want to have access to your body? Of course, he wants you to be in health, but you are his hands and feet. The Holy Spirit dwells within you. Satan has, since beginning of time, tried to deface the human body, tried to 
bring it down to a lower level of honor than what God had intended. You'll find that he is consistently trying to devalue the human body. It is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now, the church has been commissioned to take this healing to, the, to their generation. Mark chapter 16, verse 17 and 18, and these signs will accompany those who believe in my name or my authority. They will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They'll place their hands on sick people and they'll get well. Now, when Jesus is talking about you know, picking up snakes, with their hands and all that. He's not really talking about snakes. He's talking about being able to pick up something deadly or under the kingdom of darkness, you know, drinking something poisonous or picking something up that's dangerous. It won't harm you. Jesus is referring to the authority that we now have in his kingdom, that uh, Satan and his plot and the uh, earth curse system will not overrun our lives. We now have authority to live as God has designed us to live. Amen? Amen. So I remember uh, back early in the ministry, actually before I pastored, another event that really caught my attention was I was invited to speak on finances uh, to a little church down in Albany, Ohio. So I went down. I was, I was not a pastor then, but we taught some principles and some basic fundamental financial principles because I've had a financial business for 34 years. At that meeting, the pastor's mom, we went to, after the church meeting, we went to the pastor's house. I met his mother, uh, Mrs. Stewart, who was there. And she's probably 80, maybe 80 years of age, late 70s. And we sit down and had dinner after our meeting there. And so we had dinner and then comes the dessert. And I was surprised, this, this 79-year-old mom, whoever she was, uh, we had a piece of pie and then she asked for a second piece of pie. And I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. And she said, no, uh, she says, you're probably wondering why I'm eating all this pie. She said, well, it's because I was a diabetic for over 20 years. And she said, I had it severe. I was in comas, went to the hospital. I mean, I almost died several times. And she said, I got to the point, I read a couple scriptures that seemed to indicate that Jesus still heals. So I took a three by five card and wrote the scriptures about healing on those cards. And at every meal, breakfast, lunch, and supper, I would read those scriptures and say, Father, I thank you that I, I am free from diabetes. One day she said she woke up and she was completely healed. And she said ever since that point, she's as much dessert as she can get her hands on because she likes it. Because for 20-some <laughs> years, she never had it. But you know what? That was an amazing story. And God loves amazing stories about his power. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.